Rub up your engines. Billy Bob says, Scotty, does shifting my car from reverse to drive without fully stopping cause damage to the transmission? Yes, it can, especially if you do it at higher speeds and do it all the time. Years ago, you could seriously damage a transmission because they didn't have lockouts on them. And I had quite a few customers over the years. They were either driving something and their kid hit the shifter and went from drive to reverse and destroyed the transmission, or they hit a big bump or something and they jarred it and put it into reverse. Reverse. A lot of modern transmissions are set up so you can't actually do that. They're locked out. But if yours can, you don't want to do that. When you are going from drive to reverse or reverse to drive, switching the way the transmission is spinning one way versus the other, always come to a complete stop before you do that and shift it from either drive to reverse or reverse to drive. And also, if you don't want to destroy your transmission, stay the heck away from water. Uh, transmissions have little drains in them. They're, they're little vent holes. And if you go into deep water and that gets underwater, you can get water in a transmission and water destroys automatic transmission. And the same thing with a lot of cars, the transmission coolers are part of the car's radiator. They're in the bottom of the radiator to cool the transmission fluid. If you find that that's leaking and you're getting a mixture of transmission fluid and water in your coolant and in your transmission, you want to fix that right away. Don't let that go too far and destroy the the transmission getting water inside it. Gary a 78999 says, Scotty, the first gear pops out constantly. Would a clutch replacement fix the issue? No. If you have a transmission where it pops out of first gear while you're driving, your transmission's shot. The one I ever worked on it, you're driving down the road and it pops out of gear. It was a problem inside the transmission and the transmission needed rebuilt. That's not a clutch problem. A clutch problem is you can't get it into gear or it grinds when you go into gear. But if it's in gear and you take off and it pops out, the only thing that can do that is internal wear in the transmission, and you're just going to have to have the thing rebuilt. That's just the way that it goes. Kari says, Scotty, what do you think of having a 2004 VW Jetta as a daily car? Only if you don't drive it much. <laughs> My wife used to drive a mile and a half back and forth to work when she taught at a school. It was only a mile and a half away. Okay, maybe you could get away with it then, but if you're going to be putting 10 to 20,000 miles a year on that thing, uh, it'll, it'll bankrupt you. Those things are money pits as they age. They're just, uh, especially if they're an automatic transmission, if you live in a place like me, Houston, where it's hot, their air conditioning systems break and you can only use new compressors because they're weak enough as they are. I've had people try rebuild compressors in them and they always break really soon after. So I would not use that car as a daily driver unless you were driving a couple miles a day. <laughs> Alex Hamden says, Scotty, I'm planning to buy an old classic car, Range Rover Manual Classic 81 or Mercedes CL600. Get the Range Rover if you must. Those classic ones were better made. The Mercedes CL600 is an endless money pit. I got customers that bought those things. They threw endless money into them, and when they sold them, they lost all the money they threw into them. They're just endless money pits. At least the Range Rover is an 81. It's simpler. You can still get parts for it because the English love those things, and uh, that's what I'd go with it. I personally wouldn't buy either one, but I definitely would not buy the CL600. They're endless money pits. Bush Burgoff says, Dear Scotty, our Jeep Wrangler manual transmission won't go into reverse when it's cold. Do you know why? Does it need new oil? Well, you could change the oil and stuff, but if it won't go into reverse, but it goes into all the other gears, then you want to check your linkage. Maybe the reverse linkage is not going in right. If, if it's adjustable, adjust it. But if there is no adjustment and it only goes in all the other gears, fine, but not reverse, it means reverse gear is starting to go out. And I see that on those all the time as they age. That's the weakest thing is generally reverse gear is the first gear to go out on those things. Martin Sue says, Scotty, how do you fix a 94 Honda Accord with the brake light and the blinker lights that stay on even when the key is up and the radio doesn't work? We got an electrical shot somewhere, but first, your brake light stays on. First thing you want to check is your brake light switch. Those things have little plastic pieces that the brake light switch sticks on, and when that breaks, then the brake light switch goes into the hole where the plastic was and they'll stay on. So check that first. But if your blinker lights stay on, then you've got some kind of a short to power or relay or something. You're going to have to find out where the power is shorting out to them. Pull the fuses. See if they go out when the fuse is out. And if they do, then you know somewhere between the fuse and the power, there's a short. Got to figure out where the short is first. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.